Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Stranded Deep. If you enjoy this video, please hijack people's Zoom calls and preach to them about the benefits of worshipping pelicans, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. This is the story of how I ended up stranded in the middle of the ocean, moments away from being the lead role in some tasteful Japanese tentacle hentai. First though, and to catch any of you legends up that missed part 1, my plane crashed in the Pacific Ocean, I managed to escape in a little life raft, I found a damaged cargo ship with a broken plane on it that I need to repair so I can escape, I'm a registered sex offender which is unrelated but I feel important to disclose, and I eventually made my way to a small exotic island and tried to survive. I spent the first few hours of my time here dying from starvation, poisoning, dehydration, sharks and so on. It's hard not to die in this game, but eventually I started to make a life for myself. I eat a balanced diet of seagulls and, well I guess just seagulls, but hey, it's not like anything bad ever happened after someone ate a small winged creature. I've spent most of my time building a tropical cabin. It's kind of like playing Minecraft, except less girls throw themselves at you after you show them your builds. Goddamn Minecraft players, save some vagina for the rest of us. So yeah, it's been satisfying to slowly but surely learn how to survive. The key problem is, to survive you need to constantly harvest the precious resources and they never respawn. This is a major issue as I'm currently running dry. I feel like a major oil company who can't find any more crude oil reserves. And no one ever gives their thoughts and prayers to the oil companies. Everyone's too busy praying for little old Johnny who died in an orphanage fire trying to save the other children. It's pathetic. Anyway, as the mystic sea legend and Google tell me, to fix the plane and escape I need to slay three sea monsters. Now that seems a bit extreme. Last video I literally died from excessive diarrhea so I'm not quite sure if I'm ready to fight a sea monster. That being said, at my last Alcoholics Anonymous meeting they did say to engage in more outdoor activities. I decide I'm going to save the game and then sail out to investigate the first sea monster which is basically a suicide mission. It's always best to do sufficient research before you tackle a problem except if you're someone who regularly uses reddit. To add to our lack of resources, I also lost my compass. As you can imagine, not having a compass makes navigating the ocean extremely difficult. Fortunately, before I burned all of the wood on my campfire, I did build myself a raft so it's time to sail for a new island that will hopefully have what I need. As I begin sailing away, I accidentally pick up one of the crates that I've sort of glitched onto the raft for more carry space, which leads to me falling off. As my boat sails off into the distance by itself, I momentarily consider drowning myself. Not in the game, but in real life. Instead, I load up a saved game file. Honestly, if you couldn't save your game, I'd be face down in my bathtub right now. Which would be horrific, but also kind of hot because Mato's treating himself to a bubble bath as we speak. I successfully sail to another island and of course take all the wood I can carry. More importantly though, I search the shipwrecks for an elusive compass. While investigating a fishing trawler, a tiger shark wants to eat me which is low key pretty flattering because by definition I'm now a little snack. I'm glad too because I don't think my fragile ego could have taken being friend zoned by a glorified fish. I quickly discover that I'm a pretty average shot with the bow and arrow but fortunately quite a good platform jumper. Thank you Banjo Kazooie. I continue going from island to island searching for the damn compass. I can't stress how much of a process this is. Constantly capturing enough fresh water to drink, finding food to eat, not getting heat stroke and so on. After a few hours, and I mean literally a few hours, I finally find a compass and at last I can investigate the first cheeky sea monster. I arrive home and just in time too as I was close to death and dying is uncool. All this island hopping has also had some other benefits, like I've now stockpiled quite a lot of supplies which allows me to extend my shelter a bit. At long last I have a room to bring girls back to. Well there's not actually any girls around, it's a deserted island, but you know, a room where I can aggressively rub my nipples while simultaneously singing All I Want For Christmas Is You by Mariah Carey. 
For the full high definition video of that, you can follow my OnlyFans account for the competitive price of $140 per month. For any of you who think that's sinful, it's actually very stunning and brave selling nudes of yourself online. There's nothing more empowering than having thousands of awkward strangers jerking off to your lewd images. Anyway, with the power of my compass, I'm able to find True North like an Alpha Chad and sail towards the monster. Well, actually, a compass doesn't find True North, it finds Magnetic North, but this is a YouTube video, which means delivering accurate information to your viewers is entirely optional. I proceed to sail out really far and eventually come across some sort of yellow boy. As I get closer, I'm told Lusker the Great is nearby. I've brought a bow and arrow with about seven arrows with me, so I wouldn't say we're exactly ready for this, but I'm feeling optimistic for some reason. Then, in what might be one of the greatest gaming plays of 2020, I sail directly at the boy and spectacularly flip my raft over, capsizing, and yeah, and tactically point my mast down at the ocean floor as an innovative and completely intentional way of anchoring my raft. There's something really freaky about being in open water in video games. You know something is going to try to eat you, but you never know for sure when it's coming. Just in case things weren't looking grim enough, it begins to rain. This is great news for my water stills, which will hopefully fill right up so I can stay hydrated if I can get home, but short term, this really isn't great. The rain turns into a full-blown storm, so I begin firing my flare gun into the air in the hope that someone will come and save me. They might as well call this flare gun my dad's mobile number because no one's coming. At least things can't get any worse as I jump into the water to see if I can dislodge the raft. But it instantly gets much worse. Meet Lusker the Great. And also I learn right now that my bow and arrow can't be fired underwater, which I guess makes a lot of frustrating sense. I actually pause the game for a moment so I can gather my thoughts because this is scary. In fact, this is scarier than the time I got swatted for trying to download cheat codes for Kitty Powers Matchmaker 2014 Dating Simulator. Also, I just googled can you fire a bow and arrow underwater, and you can. It's just obviously less effective, but I mean, fake news. Anyway, old Lusker, the lanky mother uh, is one agile squid and eventually eats me right up. I proceed to die from drowning and, wow, bleeding too. I reload my save, and it sure is funny how the world works, isn't it? I used to enjoy calamari, but in the end, calamari enjoyed me. We now know what we're up against, and frankly, how in all that is holy are we going to kill this big girl? I eat a bunch more seagulls, and then begin crafting spears. This was quite a lengthy process, as I had to sail to other islands for the wood, but eventually I had many spears. Let's go. Lusker the Great, but this time we have weapons and there isn't even a storm about to roll in. A tactical masterpiece. I begin the fight with him again, but this time I discover an effective strategy. If I hug the boy, he can't get nearly as many hits on me and I'm able to throw spears right into his eye. It's a beautiful eye, not going to lie. You could get lost staring into that thing. He does sometimes yonk me away with his long crafty tentacle. Usually I'm able to swim back to the boy and if you ignore the fact that my raft drifted away like five minutes ago, this is going great. Just kidding, I've thrown all my spears into this behemoth and he's still kicking, plus I have no way of getting home. Death by drowning and bleeding, oh how I've missed you old friend. All right, so the problem is twofold. I need better weapons, and I need a way of anchoring my raft in the deep water. The second problem is actually pretty easy to solve, albeit the solution is enormously time consuming. The original raft from the plane has a deep sea anchor, so it'll do the job. My girlfriend actually walked in and was like, how the hell is this game fun? It looks like you're just slowly paddling a blow up boat across the ocean. She just doesn't understand what a real gameplay experience looks like. Real gamers paddle slowly. I also kill a shark because she kept watching for a while and I wanted her to see that this game has some action packed moments. After 15 minutes of watching, she told me she was leaving me for my best friend because I quote, kept pulling my pants down whenever her family visited, acting like her dad's never seen another man naked before. Anyway, this food helped me fuel myself and gave me time to craft a spear gun. 
It's a lot of hard work preparing for the next fight, but my motto is to work hard, play hard, and stay hard. That's why I'm introducing Papa Pelly's new erectile dysfunction tablets. We want to make you hard 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Even in public places. No, especially in public places so you can be just like me. A borderline sex offender. Alright, I've got my spear gun, I've got my raft, and I've got a positive outlook on life so I couldn't be more ready to slay old Lusker. I proceed to begin paddling all the way out to his little boy. I mean vulnerable boy, I mean water, ocean, sea boy. It's a long trek, but I put on DMX's song, X Gonna Give It To Ya, and it made the part really hype. I successfully anchor my raft, and so now it's only a question of if I have enough spears to actually kill the beast. So far, this episode has been like 15 hours worth of gameplay, so this really is my last chance to actually kill the dodgy malacca. Or I'll have to end the video on a really anticlimactic note as I need to upload. The spear gun is definitely helping, but Lusker is barely taking any damage per hit. It's going to be close, but I might have to build a bigger raft and get better weapons. See lads and lasses, I'm still ineffectively trying to build suspense into my videos. I'll stop now though, because in the new best gaming moment of 2020, I successfully slay Lusker the Great with only 4 spears to spare. What a life changing moment for everyone involved with Modest Pelican Gaming. As a reward, I get to sluggishly row back to my base. I also get a squid trophy which I can't figure out how to hang, so I sort of just toss it around until it's in an aesthetically pleasing position. The feng shui of this cabin is timeless. More importantly than anything is that I learn how to craft the aeroplane's propeller, meaning I'm one step closer to escaping this godforsaken island. For now though, it's back to smashing birds, aka eating seagulls. Thanks for watching you absolute legends and a massive thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time and as always, stay classy.